Here it is, gray. Such a mediocre color, really. I imagine you'd be hard pressed to find someone whose favorite color is gray. But at the same time, finding someone whose least favorite color is gray would be just as difficult. I mean, it's not black, it's not white. It's just somewhere in between, kind of like uncommitted. <laughs> But now that I've sold you on the color, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna create something using every single gray art supply that I own. And I hope you'll come along. Once I've gathered all of my gray art supplies into one place, I then swatch them all on a very useful piece of paper, a swatch card. You know, while many of the art supplies do have color coordinated caps and all of this art supplies are technically gray. There's still very few that actually look the same. You know, besides my two markers that are both called Cool gray number seven. They look exactly the same. Also, a who? I think we need to talk about warm gray zero. You're not fooling anyone. Also, as I swatch, you may notice a lot of metallic silvers. That's because I was stupid. I guess I could end the sentence there, but <laughs> I thought I didn't actually own a large number of gray art supplies and thought that I'd maybe need some filler. I forgot how many gray ohus I have. <laughs> so this was completely unnecessary, but it did make my finished illustration a lot more shiny. So, hey. Anyway, with that, now I have made a color key and it's time to move on to the next step, which is creating thumbnails. I like to do this in my sketchbook. I mean, where else do you keep the sketches? Anyway, the reason we create thumbnails is because we can't draw something until we know what that something is. I tried to create an illustration that was very heavily inspired by our medium. And I guess essentially that is the color gray. I did try to design a fun outfit that I thought would be exciting to draw, you know, even though <laughs> it's all gonna be gray. This didn't take too long because most outfits, I think, are just fun to draw, so I settled on that pretty quick, and then I moved on to working on the composition. This did take a few tries, but essentially I knew what I wanted. A girl sitting around, crumpled on the floor, in grungy clothes. So essentially I just drew that repeatedly until I was happy with it. I also decided on her sitting like engulfed in a cloud, you know, specifically a gray cloud. <laughs> Honestly, the whole cloud concept was the trickiest for me to decide on. I wanted it to be stylized, but it also look like a, you know, a cloud. <laughs> what ended up helping was having a mixture of curved and also straight lines instead of, you know, just like the curvy generic round cloud. Something else that helped was just making sure that the cloud didn't look too samey samey anywhere and giving it lots of variety and space to be itself. Honestly, I'm very familiar specifically recently with the feeling of like grayness. You know, not happy, not overly sad, just sort of existing in a realm between. Which, in my opinion, if just existing was a color, pretty sure it'd be gray. Oh, that one sketched there where the character looks like, I mean, you could call them plants behind her. That one I just wanted to try like a different idea where the character was existing, but the plants were representing life behind her where it was still blossoming. And while this does tell a story that I'm interested in conveying, it just didn't quite fit my main like story that I wanted to tell with this, which is more about the year 2020 and uh, my experiences with it. Essentially, this illustration represents my 2020 and maybe anyone else who had to grieve for a loved one while going through uh, the worst year collectively for the planet in recent memory. I mean, there certainly was a lot of sitting around crumpled on the floor in grungy clothes, although far less fashionably than my sketches would suggest. And if just describing what I'm trying to draw wasn't depressing enough, we Pencil that I was using literally broke in my hand. Cracked straight down the barrel and it kind of, it, it won't really hold the lead anymore. Problem is, it's also one of my great art supplies, so I'm going to need it for the illustration. So I guess I'll just have to be very accommodating of its needs and uh, hopefully everything will work out. So now we have an idea. I've figured out how to draw clouds and I've also filled an entire spread. It's finally time to start moving into the main event. Drawing something with all the gray out I've decided to wear gray in the spirit of this video. Although it's 80 degrees outside and I don't have air conditioning, so I don't know how long this will last. Ew, what's that? Be gone, smudge. If you're wondering what paper I use, it's this stuff. It's heavyweight, as it says, and it can hold whatever you throw at it. I only really use it for my like every color videos, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> because I am throwing so many different art supplies at one illustration and I just want to know that it's going to hold up and this stuff always does. Here we've got all of my unused gray art supplies on the left. There's a couple of paints at the top. And to make sure that I actually use every single one of them, I'm going to move them from the left side of my desk to the right. That way I can't cheat. This illustration is going to be in portrait. I thought for a second about landscape, but no, let me stick to my thumbnail. 
else for once. Now, usually I would sketch with a cold erase pencil, but I don't have a gray one, so I've opted for this guy. This is an Ohu brush marker. It's in the color neutral gray, 02. Not to be mistaken with neutral gray number two. It happens to be my lightest art supply, so I'll be able to sketch and build up value. I mean, it's a good idea in theory. I'm just terrified. Ooh, you know, sketching with marker, it's not really my usual. Oh, and here we go. We started. I'm laying the character pretty small on the page, blocking out the shapes. This is all very purposeful because I kind of associate living in the cloud and that feeling this character is representing with also kind of feeling small. Then I move on to the second art supply. This is an Uhu Fine Liner brush pen. It's gray. <laughs> if you want an accurate color name, I have two of these things and this is like the lighter one. So there you go, that's all you're getting. I'm using the fine liner of this to define the sketch that I blacked out. And then I'm switching to the brush nib to just fill in any tiny spaces to add a little bit more depth. This is a Copic Chow C7. This is the darkest gray art supply that I have, or at least I would say that, except I also have an Ohu brush marker with the same name and it looks the exact same. I used this to color the furthest back clouds, or I suppose you could call it like the lack of clouds. I haven't really decided, so I filled that in all around the page. I found using the chisel of the marker to work the best for coloring in the, the most edgest parts of the page. The paper is so thick that like I can use the chisel side and kind of like go around the edge and it won't draw on the desk. So that was pretty handy. Whereas a brush nib would like, you know, bend, ebb and flow and would have made a mess. I wanted to fill in the space underneath of the character, like right under the butt. But since I wasn't sure what shades I'd be using for the clothes, I kind of just left that blank for now. Next, we've got the Ohu Warm Gray number zero. I mean, if I should even call it that. It's much more of like a peachy almond color. Anyway, since it's the least gray of my grays, <laughs> it's hard to call it that. I globbed it all over the skin and uh, is, um, immediately realized that it was probably going to look a little whack next to all the other grays. So I kind of just assumed I'd layer it with something else later. I was not wrong. I mean, I was not wrong multiple times, actually. Trying to like quicken my pace a little, I grabbed two markers this time, Warm Gray 01 and Warm Gray 05, helping to build up some depth to the skin. I started with the Warm Gray 01 and then once I had kind of added shading with that, I actually went over all the exact same spots with the Warm Gray 05 because it was far less saturated and it was beginning to bring that <laughs> Warm Gray 0 into a much less saturated appearance. Next, I used another Ohu brush marker. I told you there were a few of these. This one is Red Gray 03. I went over all of the areas of the skin that I thought would be like the deepest in shadow. I really like how this warmed up the shadows without it looking super saturated, you know, like the so-called warm gray zero. Once I was done with that, I then grabbed the pencil, which if you remember, I mutilated earlier. You can see it's a lot like Rose holding onto Jack. You know, it only kind of grips when it's convenient for itself, which in this case is just never. Anyway, it's the Art Graph water soluble pencil. And I used this to add depth to the dark gray lack of clouds I colored in earlier. <laughs> And there goes my sweater. How long was that? Honestly, it's longer than I expected. Really stuck it out. Good job. Since the Art Graph pencil is water soluble though, I also took some water and blended out the areas where I had used it, especially like beneath the character. And it kind of just softened it up. Anyway, moving on to the next art supply. After I decide just what it is. Hey, it's the Copic Chow in the color Cool Gray number five. I mean, essentially we've still got a lot of clouds to cover. However, I decided it was too similar to Cool Gray seven. So I ended up switching to Copic Sketch Marker Neutral Gray two to color in the clouds bordering the darkest clouds or I guess like the lack of clouds. I should really decide what that's gonna be if I'm gonna keep talking about it. And I'll do it later. Anyway, since this marker is a bit dry, I continuously switch between the chisel, <laughs> the chisel and the brush very frequently, hoping to get like decent color payoff. And then once I was satisfied, I switched back to the cool gray number five, ciao, and continued my unplanned and random efforts of adding little circular blobs, hoping it would just start making sense at some point. <laughs> It's not honestly a very good philosophy, but it's the one that I live by. Sometimes it works out, usually it doesn't, but hey, I can't change my nature. Next art supply I grabbed was the Ahu Blue Gray number five. This marker was very similar in tone with the neutral gray too, but the hue is so different that I can kind of get away with putting it really close to that color. They're still distinct enough to see separation between the clouds. So that's what I did. I did leave some gaps, hoping to make the clouds look more rounded. You kind of see in the top left there, but this did not end up being a very 
never a good idea, which honestly is a shame. Darn. <laughs> anyway, I really like this color. It really spoke to me, so I kind of just kept using it until even I couldn't rationalize using any more of it when I had so many more art supplies left to go. The next art supply that found its merry way into my hand, this Copic sketch marker in the color neutral gray zero. This marker is a lot lighter than the blue gray, so I thought I could fill in the gaps that I'd left behind, you know, to kind of look like a highlight. But because that one was blue toned and this one was not, it just ended up looking <laughs> What's the like professional term? Weird. But I moved on and I also used it to add stripes to her socks because I thought I might forget about the stripes for some reason. I didn't end up forgetting, so this was either a good idea because it stopped me from forgetting or it was completely pointless. Either way, it was done. Next, I grabbed two more Ohuo brush markers. These are the color Cool Gray 7 and Cool Gray 4. I used the lighter one to fill in more clouds, big surprise. And then the darker of the two, I used to create separation between those clouds that were already there, bringing some like much needed contrast into the piece, which is something I constantly struggle with, especially when I do these kind of videos where I just like throw a bunch of the same color art supply at it. Next, I grab this Ohu brush fine liner thing in the darker gray color that I own. This I used to define the character a lot more and choose like the final lines of her face. I mean, I'm essentially finalizing the line art and this helps push back like the multiple sketchy lighter gray lines that I originally used, making them far less noticeable. And then I also use like the brush end of this pen to color in the shorts, but it's water base so it ended up looking really patchy. Next I grabbed another two Ohu brush markers, red gray 11 and red gray 12. First I tried to lay over the shorts again to try and remove that like <laughs> Let's call it a water-based texture that I'm not awfully fond of. It didn't really work, so I refocused my efforts towards the hair. I chose the red-gray for the hair, assuming it would really help stand out from like the blue-gray clouds that are immediately behind it. I also layered over all of the skin to hopefully tone it down a bit, but uh, I mean, I'm still not satisfied with that yet, so I'll keep that on the back burner. At this point, there were still more clouds that I hadn't colored yet for some reason, so I did that pretty easily. It did leave a too much red tones at the bottom right. So I also layered some of this over some of the other clouds throughout the illustration to kind of like tie it all together. Oh, and of course I colored in the lips. This is my one and only green gray marker. It's the Ahu brush marker green gray 02. You'd think with that name, I had at least two of them, but I don't. I really wanted this color since it was the one and only to like stand out from the rest of the piece. I decided the character's sweatshirt was as good a place as any. And then I also colored in just like little sections of clouds in the background, you know, tie it all in together again. Ah, there's still so many little dark supplies left and most of the paper's covered. So I guess we know how this is gonna go. It's time to start really layering on the stuff. I also started feeling a little stuck at this point. So I grabbed my lightest gray art supply. This is Warm Gray 00. It's a Copic sketch marker. I used this to fill in like any area that was still white just to make sure everything was at least some form of gray. Then I grabbed this Derwent metallic pencil in the color Pewter 02. These names. Why do they all have to have numbers? I don't know. Trying my darndest to like remove that uneven texture of the shorts again. It, it worked, but now I had the unfortunate circumstance of it being metallic, which isn't straight up terrible by itself. But taking into account like the illustration as a whole, it just kind of felt misplaced. I also decided at this point that I wanted the hair to be darker, so I grabbed the Copic sketch marker Neutral Gray 4, and I used this to layer over all of the hair, switching back to that previous red gray that I had used originally to warm it up afterwards and kind of blend it out, leaving the hair looking like this. Now this is when my dumb butt accidentally turned off my camera without stopping the clip and lost eight minutes of footage. Like a complete YouTube ignoramus. But here's a clip of me saying the name of the art supply you will never see me use from the audio that I recorded live separately. Linen gray. Mm, that's some good content right there. Anyway, we're back now. I also got a haircut. Here's me showing it off. Okay, cool. Moving on. Now that we have all regained sight, you'll see I also took that green gray marker again from earlier and had layered it over a few areas. That's why it looks different. Since it is alcohol based, every time I layered, it gets a little darker, which really worked out here. I also discovered a gray art supply <laughs> in my little break. I had gathered earlier, but forgot to swatch. I'll just put it right here 
where I hopefully won't forget about it. Or if you know what I end up using it for, you might wish I did. I mean, that's just a matter of personal opinion. Anyway, back at it. I'm using the Copic sketch marker in the color Neutral Gray 6. I decided that the hair still wasn't dark enough, even after going it over so many times. So I layered over that with this even darker marker. Darker marker. Then same as previous, I switched back to that darkest red gray and blended it all out to make it more cohesive and like purposeful looking. Next, my hand found its way to another, oh hoo hoo no, metallic sharp, oh no, not that one either, but close. The winner is this dark, super fine point Sharpie. <laughs> I basically used this to refine some of the lines from the hair since they were getting a little lost in all the darkness. And I also deepened up some other areas of the liner that I thought needed it. And then, well, ditched that. For the Aquafine Payne's Gray watercolor pan, this little guy, I apparently had to travel to like a non-existent country and picked up an accent in, along the way in my attempt to find this paintbrush to use with it. Grab a little paint brushy. Mmm, brushy. And uh, some water. First, I used it to add more shadows underneath the character, but then I kind of let my gut take the wheel and I just layered over the entire illustration. Similar toned layering on top of to tone down the skin thing, if that makes sense. I thought the skin was just still too bright even after everything I had done in an attempt to tone it down. Even that being said, I still instantly regretted this decision. I mean, look, even my camera refused to focus on it, but uh, yeah, it was too late and I had to just kind of cover the whole thing or it was gonna look way worse. So I tightened my little hair tie and got it done. Then I just bribed the camera with its favorite flavor of potato chip and we were back in focus. I grabbed this clear plastic lid to use as my palette for our next great art supply. This is the light body metallic acrylic Lumiere by Gerard in the color 551 Pewter. Again with the numbers. It also has this funny little nozzle on it, so that's cool. Even now, I'm not sure what my original plan was with this, but it didn't really work out. So I ended up really watering it down and just going over all of the cloud section of this and if you think I had it under control, here's a good summary of my mental state going through this. Just turning into a mess. <laughs> Feeling a little defeated. I grabbed the zebra metallic silver brush pen and used this to create like silver clouds. <laughs> this art supply is not as like metallic as the pencil or the glittery acrylic that I'd used previously, which is interesting that there's like a variety of metallicness. <laughs> Mm. Oh, and I also colored in uh, the socks with this. <laughs> Continuing to be fueled by my emotions, I grabbed a whole handful, actually all of, my Ohu watercolor brush pens. There's warm gray four, purple gray, gray, dark gray, and purple gray five. I was honestly not looking forward to using these because on my list of least favorite art supplies, immediately under pastels, you will find watercolor brush pens. But I will say, it didn't end up being as patchy as they usually look when I use them. I think because the paper was still kind of a little damp from layering like the watered down glitter acrylic thing that they went on really smooth for all of the colors. Since I was getting such good color payoff, I decided to use the darkest one that I had to go over the line art of the character. This really made it pop. And honestly, I was very happy that I decided to do this. And this one good experience might have just lowered its ranking on the list. Um, I I think it was just superseded by using chalk on concrete outside. Mm -hmm. So congratulations watercolor brush pens. I then used the warm gray one to add a bit more depth to the skin. After that, I used the, I guess they just call it gray. I used that to add depth around the character to try and like kind of make it pop from the background a bit more. I used the purple gray number five to outline some of the clouds to separate them even more from like the many blobby clouds, just trying to create that contrast and just make things make a little bit more sense as difficult. <laughs> as it will be. This is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. It's also silver. I use this to create a highlight on the upper left edges of all the clouds. The plan was to like it be like a bit of rim lighting or something. So like there's a l light source in the top left behind everything. And then this, which is basically the same art supply, even by the same brand. It's Faber-Castell Metallics 
nothing else metals, whatever that means. So I basically use this exactly the same, adding even more like rim shimmer, we'll call it. Then this is the Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liner. If you're ever wondering why they call it Tri Plus, it's not because it's three times great. It's because it's shaped like a triangle, the more you know. I kind of put this art supply off for too long. It ended up being just too darn light to really show up, but I tried my best to make the few strokes that did show up be meaningful. Finally decided to grab my fine point metallic sharpie. At this point I was getting a little bit exhausted by um, all of the metallic art supplies and I was really cursing myself for incorporating silver into this at all. But like a good little idiot, I continued to follow the dumb rules that I'd set for myself and tried to use this marker. It's kind of on par with like the zebra metallic brush pen in the fact that it was not as reflective as some of the other art supplies that I had already butchered this piece with. <laughs> this is the Derwent Graphitint watercolor pencil in the color cloud gray actually, which is convenient, but not so conveniently. It wasn't as dark as I was hoping. So it didn't end up being as useful for covering over some of these like random metallic lines that I drew underneath the character for some reason, but it did look a little better once I added a little bit water and blended it out. This is yet another Ohuhu brush marker, neutral gray number five. It's technically the last alcohol marker of the piece, so woo making progress. I would be more excited, but well, I guess you'll see. I do have to take some drastic measures as a last resort on this piece, so stay tuned. But we do have two metallic art supplies left. One has this big massive nib and the other one is teeny tiny. Am I the only one <laughs> who thinks the nib of this quick marker is like a work of art in itself? I feel like I could just look at it for a very long time. But later. First, we're going to use the Pentel paint marker in the color Super Silver. And let me just say, I think it has earned that title. It really is Super Silver. I mean, look, look how that thing shimmers. I mean, it even stands out surrounded by all of the other metallic art supplies on this thing. It, it, it was just a joy to use, which is probably why I ended up using it everywhere. Hmm. Just the way it glided on the paper so smoothly. I'm still thinking about it. After using it to like bring up more of the top left highlight thing that I was doing on everything, I moved to the crink marker and began filling in like larger sections of some clouds in the top right to really push that idea that like that's where our light source is coming from. Oh, and just look at that shimmer. Which brings us down to the final two art supplies. Do you hear me? What was that? <laughs> I'm getting excited. Hmm. I have this acrylic paint, which is gonna dry matte. Thank goodness this piece could use it. And then the other one's an oil paint and the oil paint's gonna take eons to dry. So clearly that leaves me with having to use the acrylic paint first. This is the Deco Art acrylic paint in the colors of zinc. I gooped that puppy onto my tiny palette, grabbed my paintbrush from who knows where, and I layered that all over the shorts. Also on the clouds in the background or like the lack of clouds or whatever. <laughs> and the base which the character is sitting on. I feel like I need to celebrate this, but this is the final art supply, Payne's Gray by M. Graham and Company, and it is an oil paint. I first added some depth to like the now flatly painted shorts from the acrylic, and I added shading as well to like the background and the character's shirt. I was trying to like push the idea of that light source coming from the top left. So I tried to make the character look like it was casting a shadow to the bottom right. I did water down the oil paint with some walnut oil. This was all just an attempt to smoothen out the transitions and like blending in all of the shadows. At this point, I realized the character looked like she was smiling, which went, hmm, how do I say this? Completely against the story I was trying to tell. So like many a time before, I used a white Posca pen to just kind of cover over the main offenders, specifically that curling lip hoping when it dries, I'd be able to color over it. I just set the piece aside and waited for the oil paint to dry. I was feeling a little bit down from using all gray art supplies, not gonna lie. So I painted some lemons that night to cheer myself up. And then we were back at it the next day, fresh, rejuvenated. Oh my, the heck happened to that face? I realized very quickly, this was not going to be an easy fix. I ended up making it far worse. Now she has a beard, a white old man beard specifically. And since this character isn't going to be doing any old spice commercials, this really wasn't ideal. 
I've never really had a problem covering over Posca pen before. My money is either on this type of paper or maybe just the multitude of art supplies that I'd layered on the face and thus the difficulty to match the surrounding colors. Either way, it was a total bust. So following a lot of internal screaming and a total rethinking of my entire life, I decided that the only way out of this was to grab an entirely new piece of paper, cut it down to the right size and shape, and just redraw an entirely new face. Turns out, a double bypass facial transplant was exactly what the doctor ordered. Who the funk? As I was drawing it, I just held the paper in place with my finger and began building up the many markers I had used previously, kind of just using my memory to figure out what those were. Slowly but surely, I grew closer to the tones of the rest of the skin. I decided this face was a significant improvement, and so I finally committed by gluing it down with my cute bunny glue, which... <laughs> I don't know, it just looks like a fun juxtaposition to everything currently in the frame. Everything on the new piece of paper did end up being a bit lighter than the rest of the illustration, but I'm okay with that. I think that it makes the emotion pop a bit more. You can kind of see the face. Previously, it had been so dark and it had blended in with like the rest of the piece, but now you can like read it a lot better. So there we have it. <laughs> An illustration using every single gray art supply that I own. This might have been one of those times where I was too busy asking myself if I could and I didn't stop to think if I should. Where was Ian Malcolm when I needed him? It was a very interesting learning experience in pushing myself to complete something even when it starts getting rough. And as Calvin's parents would say, it builds character. I still think the sketches in the sketchbook were my favorite part of this, but I always say that, so that's not really a surprise. I just enjoy sketching far more than I do finishing anything. Again, can't change my nature. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you took something away from this video. Maybe we didn't make it to 50 Shades of Grey, but I sure managed to find 42. <laughs> I had to make that joke eventually. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!